What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of The Road to Glory. Um, before we get into today's gameplay, and it will be the Silver Players gameplay, um, first of all we've actually got another SBC because EA screwed up yesterday. They put out the German SBC by mistake instead of the Argentinian SBC and that means we get the uh, Argentinian SBC here again. It's nothing major, but we're going to complete it. So two Argentinians, same club and same... One club max six, same nation max six, exactly gold, 85 chem. Uh, 22 minutes left on this. So if we go to Argentina and gold, did it have to be exactly gold or was it anything? Yeah, exactly gold. Um, I will fortunately have a whole bunch of low-end Argentinian common players um, because I've got so many. I've just got so many, I guess. So we could throw those guys in there. That's already 60 chemistry. Then for the rest of it, we can just go, for example, to what's a really, let's say Spain, I think is a good uh, a, a good mix. So we could pop in the low end Spanish players for the rest of it. Super easy for chemistry, uh, so just super easy in general. A couple of strikers will pop in here as well. And we get ourselves a 25k pack. So hopefully we get some nice stuff back out of this. You never know. You never know if your luck's in to get something big. And then the other thing that we're going to do here today is we're going to build a brand new foot champ squad it might only be for the first five or eight games of foot champs just to make sure i can still go ahead and get 14 wins in uh, relatively quick succession um but we're gonna we're gonna use a couple of the carnival cards that we picked up uh from the weekly objectives we're gonna fit them around whoever i've got available and we're just gonna use something else so a premium gold players pack guys let's see if that sbc was lucky to us it wasn't in terms of a walkout do we get an informer or a board no we don't okay brilliant so i traded in 11 commons for nine commons and three rares i'd still say that's a fair trade uh, i think that's okay um Let's just uh, let's just pop these on the transfer list. If they sell, they sell. If they don't, they don't. It's no dramas. Hoylet can go on there. And and I think don't people think it's America today for the uh, SBCs and stuff? I don't know what's coming necessarily. But let's go and have a look at the players that we've got. Some of the new players that we picked up and what we can do for building a squad. I don't necessarily want to build. Um, I don't necessarily want to. Uh, Carney Bal. I don't necessarily want to build a team that has like nine of the same players and then just two new players. I want to hopefully fit in like three or four, maybe even five of the new players um, that we might have picked up here before. So Gabriel Jesus will go in. Uh, he'll be the first one. And I won't even pick or pre select other players. I wouldn't mind using Alwa um, just because he's a quality card. Um. Maybe we can throw that Manalas in as well. Let's get let's just get some of the cards that we just haven't or don't use a lot, and we'll see what we can do. And then we get Anderson Talisker in there. I wouldn't mind. Oh, we can use Vrashalko because he links with Manalas. Arnautovic can pop up. And uh, who else did we have available from the Carnival? We had an 86, didn't we? Ben Arthur and Emre Chan. Ooh, we can actually put together, if we go 4-3-3, we're going to put, Anderson Telisker in here. I don't even care for chemistry. As long as we can get like half decent chemistry on each player, I'm okay with that. Manalas in here. Versalco. I need to go for, what is it? 4 3 3 2? No, 4 3 3 3. Yes. So we do that. We'll do that. We'll pop Emery Chan in there. Now I know now Versalco's on full chem, which is great. I'm going to have to do chem styles as well. Um, Arnautovic doesn't quite fit because we've already got our striker positions done. Um, Anderson Taliska is going to need a strong link. Do I have a strong link? I do. I have Alex Pato. Um, we would have to convert him down, which would be a real, real ball ache. Oh, no, he's already sent it mid. Perfect. Look at that. So he can go in there. What other Brazilians have I got? Let's go. Um, let's go have a look what Brazilians we can throw in here. We've got Allison. Oh, I've got Felipe Anderson's um, special card. We've got Neymar, David Luiz. Damn, we can we can do a nice little Brazilian theme here. Uh, if we pop David Luiz in there and Allison in there, this could be quite good. Felipe Anderson can go up there and Eder Militao in there. Now, if actually, if I started Neymar Zito there and then swapped those two around and then popped Felipe Anderson to a left wing, he would get six chemistry then. That's not bad. Now, once we can position change a couple of the players here to get better chemistry again, 
We'll get one, one, I don't know if I have any centre mid to CDMs. I might have sold them all. I've got one left. So we won't do Pato. We'll do Chan because he needs it. Because we can give Pato the chem boost with a manager. So Chan there goes in. So we need a Brazilian Syria manager. And that will be great for everyone. And that will be my foot champ squad for the first five games or so. Um, and we'll set up the tactics and formations as well. Because I've got an idea of, I do want to run a 4-2-3-1 still. But I've got a bit of an idea of how I want to do it. So I've got two Brazilians, one with Liga Santander, one with Premier League. Let's pop him in and let's pop the manager league on. Um, where do we need? We need French, uh, no, Italian league. There we go. Boom. So we can throw him on. That should put us to 100 chemistry. It does. We're up at 188. 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, 10. 8 on Chan. 7 on Felipe Anderson and 7 on um, Eder Militao. And then on the bench, Ben Arthur, Awa, Arnautovic, Falcao. Uh, Paulinho could come on the bench. I haven't even got any icons in here, guys. That's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Let's see who. Let, let's bring on. Let's let's get our let's get our two our two game savers just in case. You know, Ibrahimovic and Bale. Um, I will sort out chemistry styles off camera, but for the actual squad and the way we're going to set up, I'm, I'm very excited for this. Actually, uh, let's. We need to set four, two, three, one as our tactic. Formation, we're going to play drop back, but we're going to put everything else as balanced. Uh, balanced there. Formation is going to become the 4-2-3-1 narrow. I just prefer this so much more. Emre Chan and Anderson Talisca are going to be our CDMs. Uh, we're going to pop Neymar in at that center cam still. Felipe Anderson at left cam. Or do I want Pato? Who, who am I going to want as the right cam is going to be the question. It's got to, it's, it's like Neymar's going to be my center cam because he's just so good. Although, no, we can use Neymar at the right cam spot. I do use him at center cam because he's five star, five star. But in this instance, if we put Pato there, Pato's got that great shooting ability to the point where he can still hit the scoop volley. So we'll play the 4 2 3 1. Emery Chan will be one of our CDMs. And if I've got an anchor cam style, that's what I prefer for him. I don't. I am gonna. I'm gonna be sure to go and buy the uh, the right chem styles now. Anderson Talisca. I know he's not ideal for a CDM, but he's actually not bad. He's got good standing tackle and good defensive capabilities anyway. So if I've got uh, a good like a sentinel or something to pop on him, that's what we'll go with. I do have a sentinel. Um, oh, I do have one anchor as well. So we'll pop a sentinel on him. We'll pop one of the anchors onto Emre Chan. I'm going to want more chem styles for my defense as well, but I'm going to want anchors and or shadows for them. Um, so we've already got an anchor on David Luiz and on Eder Militao. Eder Militao is going to be our left back. Uh, Manalas is going to be um, our centre back with an anchor chem style on him when we can get it. And we'll, we'll wait to see if, you know, I've got obviously tomorrow and Friday before the game, the, the champs. So... Um, We've got a while for that. Vershalko there, we'll pop an anchor on him as well. Uh, we're fine with a basic chem style on Allison, And then, yeah, we'll throw Anderson Talisca. Look at that. That puts him up to 90 stand tackle, 77 marking, 99 heading, and 75 interceptions. It's not the greatest for a CDM. That's granted. The reason why I'm happy to play him at CDM is because he's six foot three, four star, four star, and he will be the secondary CDM alongside Emre Chan who will have phenomenal stats in that CDM role. So yeah, Talisca and Chan, Felipe Anderson will be uh, up front with Gabriel Jesus. Now, Gabriel Jesus, what chem style do we want for him? His pace is good, although I wouldn't mind a Hawk. A Hawk would probably be perfect for him if I have I, I do have one. I have a fair few Hawks. So a Hawk on uh, the lone Gabriel Jesus can go in there. Puts him up to 99 position in 97 finishing, 95 shot power and 89 volleys with 95 pens. 97 acceleration, 94 sprint speed, and 92 jumping with 83 heading. Now, he's only 5'9", but that's not too bad. Neymar's great with the sniper. Felipe Anderson is great with the dead eye. Boosts that positioning and finishing up. His pace is already great. His dribbling is very good other than his reactions. He's got decent stam. Um, and then Pato will be in at that cam roll. And for me, the volleys and uh, shot power are what I want. 94 volleys, 95 shot power. He's going to be hitting those scoop volleys for me as much as possible. And he has 99 jumping um, with the chem style. So, yeah, again, 5'11 with 99 jumping. He actually might be really good for the headers. I might put him out of the right cam and put Neymar back in the middle, to be fair. I think I will do that. Like, I'm not going to... I don't necessarily think he's as overpowered 
as Bale or Ibrahimovic for that crossing uh, technique. But at 5'11", with 99 jumping, he's certainly going to be no slouch with it. So I don't mind that at all. Let's put Pato out there, Neymar in there. We're not going to be crossing with Pato back to the other side because Felipe Anderson has n no, like, no... F yeah, he's 5'9", but 44 jumping, 49 heading. He's not going to be heading the other side. Although his cross... And his crossing is good, which is good. Um, so he's going to be on, what, 91 crossing with a four-star weak foot with 93 vision, which is great. And then he's going to be whipping those balls into Pato who has 99 jumping and 81 heading. And he's good for the volleys as well. What's his crossing? Yeah, his crossing is terrible, so that's okay. That, guys, is going to be our team for this weekend league. I'm excited to use this, to use something a little bit different. I might take a loss, extra loss here or there in some tough games, but this is a, this is a strong team, and it's well outside the norm of what I play with. And then on the bench, we'll, we could bring Ben Arthur in for like the last three minutes of each game. You know, maybe we'll get some use out of him with that 56 stamina. Uh, we have our as a really good defensive midfielder, just in case Talisca's not doing it. And even then, we could sub out Jesus. We could sub out any four of the attackers for Alwa and put Talisca up front. Arnautovic, just like, this is a quality card that I just never use. Uh, so put him on the bench. Falcao, the same. He had a really good goal-scoring record for me as well until I started subbing him on and subbing him off. Um, Paulinho, this card was good for, for a few games. We played a few of him, 12 games, and, and got some, some all right stuff off of him. And then Ibrahimovic and Bale, obviously the, the two goats of the series this year so far, specifically this Gareth Bale, absolutely phenomenal stats for me. Um, but that, guys, is going to be the team that we're going to take into foot champs this weekend. Um, bit weird to do a squad builder on this and then show you silver gameplay. But now, guys, we're going to go into the silver games. Uh, so I will be right back. All right, guys, as we go into the gameplay, uh, enjoy the gameplay. Um, you will see one guy, salty guy. Oh, I love it. Um, he was the... The uh, Chigres something or other or other team. And I, as I explained in the last video, I changed my name to Chigres or Smexy just to actually get games. And for the most part, people generally just played me. Even if they had Chigres as well, they just played me. Got a few salty messages and stuff, but nothing too bad. Um, this one guy, he paused it at kickoff and I didn't quit and I like carried on playing. Uh, but he obviously changed, he made changes, he brought his French man on. And he scored a goal, went 1-0 up, and then quit. He quit, winning 1-0 because I wouldn't score an own goal and quit. Or just wouldn't quit when he was 1-0 up after he scored. Ah, just, just play the game. Just play the game. First comment is from Melvin. He says, always starts off with the three pizzies in the beginning of every episode. It's been the top comment for a few videos and I never got around to it. Um, basically, I bought those pizzies. I bought about 10 pizzies and 10 Gerard Morenos um, probably about three weeks ago now in anticipation of them winning their round of 16 Europa League games. Anticipate. I bought them when they were 86 rated, expecting them with a fail because the draw had been made before they'd been upgraded to 87s, expecting them to get upgraded to 88s. And with the Gerard Morenos... I've already sold them on. Uh, and of course, Villarreal are 3-1 up. So, Gerard Moreno, his price spiked quite a lot. In terms of Pizzi, though, um, I bought him... I think I bought them for around 30k, something like that. Somewhere around there. And they're now at, like... Well, they're at 30k still. So, I could sell them and just get my money back. Maybe lose a little bit on tax. And they went as high as, like, 34k, 35k. Um, but Benfica lost their first game 1-0 to Dinamo Zagreb. I still expect Benfica to qualify. So I have a feeling, like, basically, I, I started, like, I listed them high price, hoping that just throughout the course of the cycle of weeks, they would eventually get sold. And I bought about 10 pizzies as well. Most of the pizzies sold for 38s and 40s and stuff, either lazy buyers or people just investing wrong or whatever. And I'm left with those three. And I'm not going to budge on price because I, I feel like still Benfica are going to win. And Pizzi's going to go up to an 88, and so his price will go up. Uh, so that's why I've got the Pizzi's, and that, that's, that's why he just gets relisted every time. Huntsman Gaming Network says, Guys, imagine FIFA 20 with good gameplay and all the promos and menu stuff from this year. First of all, I still don't think it would get people to be happy. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more in, in a second. But second of all, good gameplay is definitely subjective, isn't it? Because there's, there is a lot wrong with this game, but I actually enjoy the game. 
in general. What I don't enjoy is the inconsistencies and the imbalancing. And if I feel like if, if EA would work, spend more time balancing the game, I think a lot of people would be happier. But as we've discussed so many times before, they'll, they're like, they, they go from one end of the spectrum to the other. They go from time finesse shots being so stupidly broken to being utterly unusable. And what that did is it caused people to figure out what another broken thing was and volleys and first time driven shots and crossing it's always been this broken it hasn't just become broken because they removed time finesses it's just that because people had already figured out time finesses that's all that stayed and it took them like three and a half to four months to nerf time finesse shots but yeah they went too far and they made them like unscorable and that exposed the next thing and it should have taken them a week or two weeks to be like, okay, we're going to test this and see what happens. And then people would have been like, oh, well, now crossing is really, really broken if you get the right cross type to the back post. And first time shots are really, really broken. And volleys are really, really broken. And this is really, really broken. And goalkeeper movement's broken. And they could have, like, manipulated it around where after four months we have a balanced, enjoyable game instead of a game where it's, um, well, where it's what we have. In terms of the promos and stuff... Uh, again, I think it's super subjective depending on what kind of player you are in FIFA. Are you a casual? Are you a hardcore? Are you kind of in the middle? And even if you are a hardcore, are you a really good hardcore player or are you a really bad hardcore player? Because just being a hardcore doesn't in, you know, immediately make you great at the game. You could be somebody that plays this game for four, five, six hours a day. For example, Cap Gun Tom. He plays the life out of this game, still shocking at the game. You know what I mean? He's absolutely woeful. But... Um, yeah, you know, even depending then on what aspect of the game you are will then depend on whether or not the content we've had this year specifically is good or bad. And we will get into that in a little bit more as well. Um, and that is from this comment. Mr. G6 says, imagine buying a lot of Argentinian players and then finding out the SBC for Gomez cost 400k. Ha, 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 ha. The carnival has been terrible. Um, I've always given EA credit when I think... Uh, um, you know, some menu content is great. I've t told you guys flat out when I thought it was bad. I've changed my opinion on certain things based on seeing other things here or there or taking the viewpoint of you guys on board. Carnival is just nonsense. I don't understand what the point of this was. You know, I, I, I favored it a whole bunch of tweets because I asked yesterday, like, you know, in terms of viewership on YouTube, it, it goes a long way for me to understand how engaged people are with certain things based on the views that I get because I get such steady amount of views in certain areas and usually when I have weeks that we have no promos on the main channel my drafts will tend to do really really good and if we get any random SBCs like you know Champions League upgrade packs or um, a player SBC or a um, like a uh, what the hell are they called? Flashback SBC or something like that. Those views will just like bang because people are like, oh my God, this is brilliant in an off week. Love that. And then the drafts will do, you know, 140, 160, 180k views. On promo weeks, typically I tend to upload drafts a lot less because the promo videos are banging so hard. Uh, you know, if we, if we go back even to, um, what was the last promo before this? The headliners promo, uh, that literally banged. Most videos were hitting 250k, 300k views, some of them up towards 400k. And I still did a draft here or there that also did quite well. The the Hamshik uh, SBC video, which was through Headliners Week, got 200k. Um, the Fernando Torres flashback got 240k. The Rashford headliner, I did a video on him and that got 200,000 views. The Leighton Baines flashback and the Huntelaar flashback, they both got uh, 200,000 coin, coins, 200,000 views or more. And people just were enjoying the content. When we fast forward to the Carnival content, um, the 90 Carnival SBC Gomez card has 110k. The Bonaventura card has 110k. The flashback Vincent Company does have 190k, which actually is surprising, contrary to how expensive he is. That means a lot of people enjoyed that. The Mendy SBC only has 140k, but the Hulk has 190k, so a lot of people enjoyed that. But generally, the, the drafts that I've done in between have slammed for views. Uh, yesterday's one 200k, three days ago 220k. Um, the Player of the Month Aguero, only 150k views, and that means that people just don't care about the Player of the Month card because it's too expensive. And I've never, ever seen... 
a promo week where the promo content is getting less views than my draft content because the draft content works whether we're in a promo week or not and typically works better outside of promo weeks because people aren't, uh, you know, like what, what happens is in promo weeks, people are like, oh, you know, if I'm going to watch one video, do I want to watch a draft or do I want to watch the promo video? They'll typically watch the promo video. Um, this week, the opposite. They are not watching the promo videos. They're not engaged with the promo content. And so I asked people on YouTube, sorry, on Twitter, why aren't you engaged with this? And, and it's the same for the Road to Glory. This week, the Road to Glory content the views are at an all-time low for the Road to Glory right now during a promo week. And last week, when there was no promo content, it was, it was doing great. I was hitting 80s and 90s and some hundreds, and now during a promo week, we're literally hitting like 50s and 60s, which means people just don't care about this promo. And so I asked, why don't you care about this promo? And the responses I got ranged in general from... Um, <laughs> We're in that moment of the game where team of the season is inching closer. There's really no reason to do ridiculously overpriced SBCs for non-end game cards and carnival players seem unpackable. Was only engaged with the fun weekly objectives. Very fair. Uh, promos losing specialness. People don't care about poor value SBCs when they, when they feel a sense of urgency. But now we know there's foot birthday coming and team of the season just over a month probably. Just no need for cards which aren't team of the season or icon level. Um, too expensive for average cards. Saving for one prime icon moment that probably won't come out until FIFA 20. Trash carnival SBCs. Uh, lack of top tier icons. By this time last year we had the likes of uh, R10, Vieira, Henri, etc. I grinded this complete multiple icon SBCs this year in order to set myself up nicely whenever R10 came out of our SBC. But judging from how EA are doing things is going to be a while. Um, they're releasing it a different promo every week. It's become mainstream now. Seems pointless to waste money to keep buying packs for every promo. It's just become pointless releasing all these new special cards. Um, objectives were great, but the rest of the content is meh. The gameplay is bad. It's an obvious money grab. That's it, really. And, and generally, people seem to... Uh, I, 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 I thought I'd favorited one uh, comment. And one guy was like, these cards just don't move the needle. And I think that is a perfect kind of uh, way to express how I feel about this. These carnival cards are lower tier than headliners, future stars, uh, flashbacks, player of the months, some team of the weeks, although team of the week in general is pretty poor as well, um, icons. These, these cards are just lower tier than all of those, and yet the SBCs are coming out more expensive than those cards. You know, when SBC Gomez is coming in at probably like 330, 340, 350k, that's a ripoff. The DeAndre Yedlin that came out today is a ripoff. 160k for a right back that is mediocre in today's current state of game at best. And then for 200k, you can get one to watch Zhao Cancelo, who is a phenomenal right back, only a little bit more expensive, tradable, and upgradable. If, if he gets another inform, he'll just go up. And I think the, the, the setting is correct. This, this, as this promo is offering, like, let's say Prime Icon moments are tier one. Let's say Prime Icons and, and Team of the Years, tier one. Prime Icons and certain flashbacks and, and other high end cards are tier two. And then tier three are players like 88 Felipe Anderson and, and players like that. I think these cards are tier three cards that EA are charging tier two and tier one prices for when they should be charging tier four prices for based on the fact the fuck birthday is either going to be this Friday or in the following week. And it's going to be another promo with another huge set of teams and SBCs and stuff. And I think foot birthday is going to be a massive, massive uh, promo because it is the 10 year anniversary of FIFA Ultimate Team. So I can't imagine EA are going to go light on this one. I think it's going to be massive. And I, I actually genuinely believe that's why we're getting these hugely overpriced SBCs. It's, it's because EA want to drain people of their accounts and drain people of their cards and their coins and stuff and then give them a promo where they can't resist it so that they spend FIFA points. And I think that's horrendous. Um, uh, but yeah, in terms of the cards, every card that's been released, with exception of Neymar, has got a counterpart in the game that is either better and very similarly priced or as good as and much cheaper, and in some cases, better and much cheaper. There's not a card out there that is the best card of their kind of standard 
and cheaper than any other alternative. And that sucks. It really sucks. There's still some good fun cards in there. And that's why I'm loving Draft at the moment. Because I get the luxury of using these carnival cards without having to pay over the odds stupid excessive prices for them. Um, the last comment that I'm going to be able to have time to read here is from Ben Walker. says, Project Team of the Season has sadly been cancelled. Come back next year if you want to see the event. Um, I knew I was going to get a few comments like that. I thought I made it perfectly clear in the last video. But just to reiterate, Project Team of the Season initially was going to be champs, rivals and but squad battles rewards saved for team of the season. I then got caught up in my own hype and expanded that to, oh, I'm going to sit here and grind league SBCs and do this and that and the other. And then I realized what this series is about. It's about having fun and enjoying our packs and stuff. So it's gone back to the initial project of project team of the season, which is saving champs, rivals and squad battles rewards for team of the season. Um, and that's pretty much it. So yeah, we're going to, as I said, we'll set, I've got some packs saved that will open for fuck birthday. And then everything else will be saved for team of the season. Um, and uh, we'll go for that. I did have a few more comments, but we're sadly at the end of the video for today. If you did enjoy this video, uh, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. That is how we accomplished uh, Taliska. 10 wins, 1 loss, 3 rage quits. I only showed one of them in here. And uh, one game that I threw away and gave to Reeve. But yeah, thank you guys for watching. And I'll see you next time. I'm out. Peace.